Hark, the cosmic angels sing. Yes, yeah, quite enough of that, isn't it? Let's see what I got from Cosmic Toys. So first up, this poor little Tron Legacy pack, it's been sat in the store for ages, so I took pity upon it and, um, and grabbed it. It's quite, quite an unusual thing to look at, because you sort of look at it and you sort of think, what, what exactly is going on here? And I'm, I'm not really sure whether or not I'll actually get it out, but as you might have seen in other videos, you know, I've got a few of these from this range. Um, it actually looks as if it's got some sort of game mode to it, as if it, I think it's two separate. That's interesting. I, you know, I really hadn't noticed that before. Is I think it's got two separate bases to it. So what you do is you sort of see, you can sort of just sort of pull them apart, and then there's some sort of action thing that goes on. Maybe I don't know, but basically this is a recreation of um, a Discord scene in the Tron Legacy film, where you've got Rinsler up against Sam Flynn. Um, Interesting, they call it the Coliseum Disc Battle. Coliseum Disc Battle 1, in fact. Um, so basically, Rin's the, the cheating so-and-so, because he's got two discs. Sam's only got the basic single disc, and they're fighting in this sort of enclosed space where you can take out the floors and the ceiling and all that sort of good stuff with, the, with a view to de-resing the opponent. And the fight only stops when um, Rin's literally draws blood, which shouldn't be possible, Unless, of course, you're a user um, in the Tron universe. So, um, yeah, so but possibly a little bit more to that than I was like, anticipating. But there weren't loads of these things um, produced in terms of the overall number of sets. And I'm pretty sure another set I've looked at actually mentions all the other items that are available. But this one doesn't seem to follow that, um, that sort of way of doing it, which is interesting. So anyway, yeah, just, um, just a, a little a little cur curiosity picked up there, really. Now, do you remember this chap? Um, I recall that um, Gareth had got a few Farscape figures in. And I, last time I was in the store, I was moving so quickly, I did not have time to really sort of go up and digest what he had and pick, pick any of them up. So with a bit more time on my hands, and as I wasn't filming, I just sort of went and had a better better mooch around and Farscape is a science fiction TV show um, started in the 90s I think but quite late 90s and it's a lot of its alumni ended up on Stargate curiously um, <laughs> in various in various guises um, this guy didn't this is um, Captain Bylar Crace and I have a, a, a curious sub-collection that I'm gradually forming over time of captains <laughs> of science fiction ships. And um, he fits right into that, obviously, because he's a captain of a science fiction ship. In fact, he's, he's a captain of more than one ship in the show. Um, I would recommend seeing the show. I don't want to spoil it for you, but basically he does have quite a complicated backstory. But he is a, a peacekeeper by origin. So as you can see, they're quite into their sort of their black outfits, but he's got all the he's got a lot of the stuff that I would expect him to have. Um, I'm not actually sure what that is. It looks like a helmet, um, and that's a, a pulse pistol, which is a, a favoured sidearm of, of the peacekeepers. But I, I, I'm, I'm I'm impressed with his his face sculpt. His face sculpt is really really good. Um, I mean, there is if you know the character, there is no mistaking who that is at all. 
It's really, really impressively done. I'm actually wondering now who's the um, who's the manufacturer. Because this is my first time actually sort of looking at this, and I haven't actually put my glasses on. Toy Vault. Toy Vault is the manufacturer. I'm not sure if I have any Toy Vault toys at this point. Um, I, I'm just, I was sort of looking at him and thinking, does he does he remind me of anything else that I have? And I was thinking a little bit around Xena actually, but I'm not sure that. Xena was Toy Vault, but um, I'm sure you'll correct me in the, co the comments fairly rapidly. So, um, ah, so we've got, so these are the Series 1 figures. Um, so we've got um, Crichton, uh, Dargo, um, Pow, is it, uh, Zahn, is it Pow Zahn? Something like that, and um, Chiana, and so in this series, it looks like we've got Scorpius, Erin, who's got a really weird... Her, <laughs> I looked at her action figure and I was like, mm, that's kind of weird. Cause it looks like she's itching her stomach for some bizarre reason. It's really odd. Um, and we've got Rigel, of course, the Dominar. Um, this is actually advertising the series. Brilliant. It's actually advertising the fact that the series is on, is on sci-fi. Um, and it was a good series. It, it was one of those sort of really, really... It's a Jim Henson-based sort of show and it's quite quirky. Um, it's got some puppets in it, but not loads. Yeah, so the Sebastian Peacekeeper Captain. Um, so a little bit of a bio on the back there. Over 20 figures planned. I'm not sure how many they ended up making, mind you, because the series did run for quite a while, and it even had a bit of um, a rebirth, because they did manage to do um, an extra couple of episodes called the Peacekeeper Wars, which, which actually sort of rounded off the series and gave it an ending that perhaps it wouldn't otherwise have had. So... Um, quite cool to have him. Um, I've, I've only ever seen the the figures on auctions before. I don't think I've ever seen them in the flesh particularly. Um, so he's quite a big figure as well. Um, I don't think I've got a, a tape to hand to measure him with. But he's, um, you know, it's a good size and I like the packaging. I also like the, the fact that the packaging is a completely and utterly random shape. Which makes no sense whatsoever. Which is very, very Farscape. <laughs> It's just, I mean, that's completely in keeping with the, with the with the sort of the the, the general bonkersness of the show, uh, but it is a fun show to watch. Uh, so I would encourage it if you can find it. Um, you know, I'm sure it's on streaming and and, and all that sort of good stuff. But um, I've got ridiculously long, long shelves of all the Farscape DVDs because at the time that was the only way to to get the whole series. It was on it was on BBC TV but very, very intermittently. So, you know, it was one of those where you had to try quite quite hard to watch the entire thing. But yeah, cool, cool pickup. <laughs> Gareth Gareth gave me a bit of a sort of WTF look when, when I put this as the first thing I picked up when I when I was looking around and I, I picked up Danger Mouse. Um I, it was quite funny. I just saw it literally like across the store. And I looked at him and he looked at me and it was a thing, you know. Um, I can't even say that it was, uh, you know, one of my sort of top, top favourite shows from my childhood. Because he has had a reboot. Um, there has been a new Danger Mouse series since. So this is from the newer series, which I think is why he's got this sort of doody um, jetpack kind of thang going on. But... Um, the thing is, he still looks very much like the original Danger Mouse. And even his insignia is very, very close to the, the original. But he, so he's got this and... Ah, Gareth, Gareth actually turned him off for me. So I'm going to turn him back on. Okay, that wasn't a thing. I'm sure you made sound. Ah. Classy. See why he might have turned it off, however. <laughs> um, but it's just great. It, it, means, it seems to stand want to stand up really, really well, even though it's it looks ridiculously gangly, like it, it wouldn't hold its own weight, and his head is huge. Um, but I just think that's 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 just marvelous. Um, I don't think I can't even remember if they did any toys of Danger Mouse originally. I think there were definitely sort of you know books and annuals and all that sort of good stuff, but. I'm really not sure if they did anything, you know, more than that. I mean, if you're unfamiliar with Danger Mouse, he's he's a secret agent in a sort of James Bond style. 
He has a, a flying car, and his base of operations is a post box in London. Um, and the, his car takes off from the paving slabs at the bottom of the, the, post, off, the post box, basically. Um, so it's kind of, it's weird, it's wonderful, it's very British. Um, he has a bumbling sidekick called Penfold, who is basically a mole. Um, and his arch nemesis is uh, Baron Greenback. Um, and he has a he has his own uh, uh, sort of sidekick as well. So it, it's it's all very very wholesome, good fun. I think it was a was it Cosgrove who did it, the production team I think. Um, and they did things like Count Docula as well. If it's the people I'm thinking of as well. So you know he's he's very very eighties. And I saw this and it might be a modern toy, but it's harking back to. You know, a sort of a, an era that I'm very, very close to, as you know. So, you know, I thought it would have been rude not to. Now, I am not the Godzilla expert that Gareth is by any stretch of the imagination, but I do remember the original films, and I do enjoy a good Godzilla film, and so curiously does my son. And I actually got these for him, um, because he has no idea what he wants for Christmas, apparently, so he, he may well find that he has these. Um, and this is just sort of, it's completely random. Um, and Gareth sort of, Gareth said to me sort of, you know, you do realise these are just sort of plasticky toys for kids. And I was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> but, um, you know, it, it's it's quite, they are quite good fun. These are the sort of the Monsterverse films. And, you know, they are making quite a thing of it because they are titled Monsterverse. Um, but they're still got, they're still Toho related, of course, um, who are the original creators. And interestingly, this is, are the Playmates, interestingly? I keep thinking the Playmates is still a thing, because I mean, I'm more familiar with their sort of Star Trek um, products, but of course, you know, they are still, they are still active. And, you know, I thought it was quite a decent, a de quite a decent Kong. It's even got some little additional sort of, um, you know, sort of play pieces there that, uh, I'm not entirely sure what that is, but, you know, little, little sort of jet fighters and stuff to annoy Godzilla. And then of course we have um, Kong on the other side. And, you know, these two have ever, faced off there's a new film coming out which you know my son's quite excited for um which is which is nice and as, as, as gareth noted to me in, in in the shop it's kind of you know it's kind of nice to see um kids getting excited about these and there's another plane there for for kong to have a have a scrap with in fact i think these are probably battle damage pieces i think the idea is that, oh yeah so you, the idea is that you you sort of replace the um the battle damage elements so you can't see the innards anymore which is nice <laughs> but um yeah, so I just I just grabbed those as, as stocking fillers really as much as anything else. Um, but it's quite interesting to see what what you know what a modern toy does kind of look like in this these days. Um, quite quite a big range as well. So there's quite a few, you know, the monsterverse being what it is, there are quite a few different monsters that are involved with it. Things like the skull crawls, and of course there's been Mecha Godzilla as well. Um, they I mean they've even got different variants of Godzilla in Hong Kong. Um, so Hong Kong. Hong Kong Battle Kong <laughs> is very confusing. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm, and I was I was chuckling. There was, there was one in the store which was basically exactly the same Kong only with a bit of snow. It was like literally the same the same thing with a bit of snow. So I thought that's 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 funny. Um, so yeah, I just picked those up for a chuckle. Well, not not for me, but just see see the reaction on my my son's face when he says I'm too old for toys, which he will do inevitably. But you know, such is the way of things. So yeah. Um, I, I can't really recommend them at all because I haven't unpackaged them or, or, you know, sort of tried to play with them. But at least they've tried to do something in terms of accessories with them, which is perhaps, you know, more than you can really ask for. So, yeah, interesting. So that's it for that for this one. Um, Merry Christmas to one and all. And I will um, probably take a little rest just after Christmas and then um, come back in the new year and perhaps have a, a bit of a... A review of the year, as is as is the way with with New Year, <laughs> New Year times. You know, it's kind of looking back and seeing what I've got hold of, and thinking about what I might look to get in the in the new year when my uh, my bank balance has recovered a bit. So that's it for now. Um, have a good, have a great time, everyone, and um, see you soon. Cheers for now.